I've covered a few stories of underreported or just unknown arrests of rock stars, including the Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam and the Chris Robinson of the Black Crows arrest. The links to those videos are down below. But today I want to talk about another arrest involving David Lee Roth of Van Halen. In 1993, it would come to light that former Van Halen frontman David Lee Roth was busted for drugs during a police operation dubbed Double Header in Washington Square Park in New York City. Roth, who was 38 at the time and wearing a baseball cap, would be busted by cops for buying a $10 bag of pot from a dealer and was then trailed by an undercover officer a few blocks away where he'd be arrested. Great use of taxpayer dollars. The New York Daily News, who reported on the incident, was quoted as writing, Roth, formerly of the group Van Halen, told a radio interviewer just last year that he left the group in disgust over the band members using drugs. The arresting officer didn't even know it was the former Van Halen frontman. The officer who arrested Roth would tell the New York Daily News, he had sunglasses on and I was looking at him and I was like, this guy looks familiar to me. Then we asked him his name and he said Roth and we went David Lee and he said yeah. In addition to arresting Roth, the police detained 75 people over several days during their sweep of Washington Square Park. The police frequently made arrests in the area, but they typically didn't result in a celebrity being in handcuffs. One of the 20 dealers arrested that week had already been arrested a hundred times since 1987, according to the Daily News. Roth would be charged with a violation and issued a summons similar to a traffic ticket to appear in criminal court a month later. After he was released, Roth made no comments to the press and instead ran away from photographers for about five blocks until he was able to jump into a cab. If convicted at the time, Roth would have faced either 15 days in prison or upwards of a $250 fine. According to a police spokesman, the violation is considered to be less severe than a misdemeanor. Eventually, Roth would be put on probation for a year and the charges would be dismissed. Shortly after the incident, shock jock Howard Stern discussed the arrest during Robin's news segment, and Roth would end up calling into the show and discussing what happened. Jesus on the air at this point. What's going on with all this pot stuff? Howard? Hey, oh, David Lee. Yeah. You know it. There he is. Robin, how are you doing? Good <laughs> so what? Are you, are you, what? So what's your take on this whole <laughs> arrangement here? I'm not sure. I, I first, My first shock was, why is David Lee Roth copping his own pot? In the park, the park is like the most dangerous place in the world. Anybody who's ever been to New York, you just don't go into that park. Not only that, you you, you, you tend to be ripped off or something in there. Plus, why would you only buy $10 worth of pot at a time? Because you've got more millions than anybody I know. Well, Howard, I don't smoke millions, millions of dollars worth of pot. Right. And, you know, for many, many years, it was something like um, buying a pretzel and a soda pop on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, right. That kind of thing. And um, I understand the queen of up the park situation I, I see both sides of it yeah. and uh you know <laughs> well, yeah, that's I'm why I was kind of a rock in a hard place here you know it's I'm told this is a $35 ticket here do you know anything about that well I thought it was like the most I could find you is like 250 bucks I'm the all the police told me that that's what happens for multiple bus if you have five or six or seven times so in, in, in essence marijuana is legal in this country because yeah you get a traffic ticket yeah you get a traffic it's a ticket summons. There was no fingerprinting or no mugshot or jail cell or... But here's what I don't understand. Why didn't you just call Jackie if you needed pot? Why would you go, why would you go to the danger? And why did you buy... This is a story that happened over more than a decade ago. In 2008, the public and David Lee Roth himself first learned about the imposter. In July of that year, it was reported by multiple music news sites that a man claiming to be the Van Halen frontman was pulled over for erratic driving in Brantford, Ontario in Canada, telling the police he was the Van Halen frontman and that he was having an allergic reaction to peanuts. Police would wait with the man until emergency medical services arrived to take him to a nearby hospital, where he told the staff the same story. Following his release from hospital, the imposter was spotted at a local bar posing for pictures and doing karaoke with several of the nurses from that hospital. Rolling Stone magazine would report about his appearance at the karaoke place saying the man was wearing expensive clothes and a hospital bracelet. The Star newspaper would reveal that the man posing as David Lee Roth was named David Kuntz from Cambridge, Ontario. He had a long history of posing as the Van Halen frontman, including performing with a house band at a local bar. According to Enemy, the whole story fell apart after some of the star's readers recognized the imposter and informed the police of what he was up to. 
TMZ would end up reaching out to the real David Lee Roth, who is out on tour with Van Halen, and clarified that he is in fact not allergic to peanuts, but is, and I quote, allergic to criticism. David Coons years earlier was at the center of a 1989 murder trial involving a love triangle between him and two other women. Kuntz was in a relationship with a woman named Kim Blinkhorn, but when he told her he was leaving her to be with another woman named Rowena Parsons, with whom he had a child with, Blinkhorn would end up murdering Parsons in front of Kuntz and Parsons' three-year-old daughter. Blinkhorn would claim Kuntz convinced her to carry out the act, but he was found not guilty and Blinkhorn pleaded insanity and was found not guilty of the crime. It came out during the trial that Blinkhorn paid for Kuntz's lifestyle and supported his band by working multiple jobs. Never a person to let a tragedy go to waste, Kuntz used the murder to get free things. The owners of a local hair salon in Cambridge told the media that Kuntz told them about the murder in order to get free services including haircuts, manicures and eye treatments. One one publication tracked down one of the imposter's former friends who revealed, I went to high school with the guy, we were sort of close friends and I know he gets people into trouble, he's a manipulator. Another friend would tell Sleaze Rocks, he's never changed, he was always hustling and scamming, I think he's a sociopath, he's got a talent for finding people who are gullible he'd say. Even as far back as the late 80s, when Kuntz played in a variety of bands, including one called Majesty, he was frequently mistaken for Van Halen's David Lee Roth. Around the time of his arrest in 2008, Kuntz would meet a woman named Bobby Jo King after asking for directions to an AA meeting. He was able to convince King to come into his car and show him the directions to the meeting and reveal to her that he was David Lee Roth. King was convinced that he was the real David Lee Roth and told her husband she was bringing the singer back to their house. Her husband, Bill, was so thrilled with the news being a huge Van Halen fan that he jumped the gun and told his friends who was coming to his house, only to later reveal to Sleaze Rocks, I've been humiliated by this. I told all my friends he was here and now my answering machine is full of messages from them making fun of me. Then almost a decade later, it came out in 2017 that the impersonator was facing sex charges. He was arrested after going into a Long and McQuaid music store in both Chilliwack and Abbotsford in British Columbia in Western Canada and told the staff that he was David Lee Roth. In 2019, he would go to his first trial where a mistrial would be declared. He was scheduled to go back to trial as recently as this summer, but there's been no updates on his case. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.